Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tutorial session here in Procreate guys and for today's video we're going to be taking a look at this cut paper effect here entirely done in Procreate but with a realistic look. So we're going to be looking a lot on light and shadows, we're going to be using quite a few textures in order to achieve this look. So the very first thing here is to of course create a new file, create a screen size canvas. I'm going to be working in portrait mode for this tutorial, but you may decide if you want to go landscape or portrait on your side. The next step is to choose your favorite font. I am personally going here with Avenir on heavy and then choose your favorite letter or word. I'm going to be using for this, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, just one single letter because I'll be able to draw the shapes on the inside of the letter a little bit more specifically and intentionally. So after you choose your letter, make sure to scale that up to be at a really as big as possible at the center of the frame. And once you're scaling, make sure that this letter is not rasterized or converted into pixels. Make sure it, it is still live as an editable text layer. So now that we have the letter at the center of the screen, we're going to go into the opacity of this layer and bring it down to at least 50% or less. You can set it to about 25% if you want to, or even 10%. The most important thing is that it's, it's going to serve us as a canvas so that we can draw the shapes inside of it. Now we're going to start drawing the shapes or the levels of our cut paper effect. So every time you start a new level, make sure to create a new layer. Now in order to create these levels or to draw these shapes, we're going to be using a monoline brush but go into the brush studio and set the streamline function to 100% because we really want to get as smooth as possible all of those curves looking really nicely as we draw them. Also, make sure to try to follow the shape or direction of your letter. So in this case here, I'm really trying to follow the curvature and the curves of the S letter so that I can get the best results for all of the levels that I create. So as you finish a level or layer, remember to fill these shapes with color. For this tutorial here, I'm going to be creating four to five levels. So I'm not gonna go super crazy on the number of levels of cut paper. Of course, you can do more levels if you want on your side. Just again, remember that each level should have its own layer. So now that we're done here, creating all of the levels, the different levels and filling them up with color, start duplicating these levels. And on each duplicate copy, we're gonna go into the adjustments menu, select hue and saturation and bring the saturation and brightness all the way down. So we're making these duplicates a pure black color. Now back into the layers panel, select each duplicate layer, each pure black color. And we're gonna go back now into the adjustments menu, but this time we're gonna be selecting Gaussian blur. And we're gonna be blurring each level, starting to create the optical illusion of stacked paper. In terms of percentage here of blur, I'm using somewhere about 11 to 15% of blur. Now back into the layers panel, let's select all of the copies, all of the blurred copies in pure black. And now with the move tool, we're going to be finding the direction of light. And this is where it starts to really get interesting here. You can definitely see the light and shadow starting to move and adapt to the direction that you want to give in your illustration. The next step is to uh, go back into the layers panel, create a new layer that is on top of everything and fill it with a bright color. So now back into the layers panel, let's find your base letter and hit the select option. Tap on invert, select the top layer and I'll select the option mask. This will create a mask that will reveal the contents, all of those beautiful shapes you just drawn inside your letter or word. Now starting with some grading and final touches here, we're gonna be using the liquify tool and now we're gonna be using on each shadow layer, we're gonna be pushing shadows and bringing out shadows in order to create further direction of light and also the feeling of that the paper is actually more like multi-dimensional in terms of height. Somewhere the paper could be kind of closer to each other to each one of its sections or maybe the paper is a little further away in height from its levels. Also for the shadow layers at this point, I believe that I set them to multiply to about 40% or 50% and then created a duplicate of each shadow layer and set the duplicate to overlay to about 80 to 100%. And the reason for that is that the multiply really helps to darken the shadows, but the overlay not only darkens, but also burns it a little bit, which is also a little bit closer to reality. 
The next step here is to take your topmost layer, the one that we just added that mask. We're going to flatten the mask to make it into a one single layer. And now we're going to create a duplicate of that layer. Go to the adjustments menu, set a hue saturation, set the brightness and saturation all the way down. So we're going to make another pure black color. Go back into the adjustments menu and this time use some Gaussian blur. And now we're going to be creating some shadows that are coming from the topmost layer. The next we can also move this shadow layer so that it follows the direction of lighting of your scene. The next step here is to use some textures that are really going to bring this together. So I've used a couple textures, a couple paper textures. One was a very kind of crumbled paper that I've used on the brighter color that is sitting at the top of everything. And the other one is more of a textural kind of paper that I've used for all of these sections, for all of the levels of color. I've set both of those layers into a multiply blending mode and both are sitting at about 50 to 80% opacity. So that's it for this video guys, hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is always to make you a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen there's more content for you guys to watch, one is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.